One day, a portal to another world appeared on Earth. It was a large gate with diamond patterns like a chessboard, surrounded by a red magical aura and a countdown timer ticking away. As soon as the time expired, a gigantic monster with a horrifying mouth and sharp teeth emerged. This beast had horns on its head and armor as thick as a shell. It roared on the ground littered with corpses. These creatures were unaffected by guns and bombs. A colossal flying monster with blue feathers like an eagle swooped through the sky and took down planes. Additionally, a massive hybrid monster appeared near a building, sporting multiple crocodile-like heads and tentacles resembling those of an octopus. These were creatures from the underworld, one terrifying monster with three wolf-like heads emitting red energy moved towards a golden shining door in the sky. It paused at the sight of the door. Only one group could pass through the challenge door, a transparent golden door adorned with five star patterns. A young blonde man in a suit emerged from the door, placing his hand on his chest and bowing. He was the chosen one. With eyes sharp like an eagle's, he looked ahead and raised a glowing gun high. These were the players. The blonde player descended to the ground in a flash of energy appearing right behind the colossal wolf. A group of players, each with unique abilities and weapons, emerged simultaneously around the world as portals appeared unexpectedly. One by one, they defeated all the underworld creatures. The populace breathed a sigh of relief mixed with fear. A giant magical board hovered in the sky above the city. People began looking up because it had the same countdown timer as the portal. The city's inhabitants watched in horror, believing that when the timer hit zero, the world would end. As the timer hit zero, the entire sky above the city turned dark and foggy. The players appeared, dressed in immaculate white suits. The blonde man adjusted his collar and told everyone to relax. They called themselves the Heavenly Clock, and they vowed to end the chaos. The world's fate was entrusted to these players, who became the heroes everyone admired. A monstrous creature with glowing yellow eyes, resembling a dragon, gazed into the distance. These were the monsters of the underworld. The players failed. A massive dragon flew over the city, causing people to flee and scream for help. As the dragon soared between residential buildings with its mouth wide open, a silhouette of a man in a blue cloak appeared on a balcony. He was a young man dressed in black, emitting multicolored energy. This was Subaru, also famous in one of the players. He pulled back his hood to reveal a confident face with slightly furrowed eyebrows. Raising his hand towards the monster, he declared that enough was enough. A group of panicked people ran in and looked back at Subaru. A man in a vest exclaimed that Subaru had come to help them. A woman with short hair smiled at Subaru, grateful for his presence. A young man in a white jacket looked up, smiling and blushing slightly. The man in the white sweater pointed out that it was Subaru. Someone in the crowd shouted that they were saved. Subaru wondered if there was something that made him different from other players because he wasn't bronze, silver, or gold. Different colored swords appeared in the air, aligning themselves. Subaru thought he was the only one who had received power from the rainbow door. Subaru stood on the railing in a fighting stance, pulling one arm back as a bright red sword materialized in his hand. In the crowd, an old woman knelt and wept, clasping her hands in prayer. She said that Subaru always shed blood for them and fought for their lives. Subaru leapt from the railing with his legs, soaring through the air at the speed of light, striking the monster with all his might. Subaru landed on the ground, and the monster exploded midair from his strike. The crowd was shocked by what they saw. They couldn't comprehend how Subaru could kill the monster with just one blow. The crowd began to cheer and raise their hands in the air. Subaru was slightly confused. Someone in the crowd yelled that it was amazing, exactly what they expected from Subaru. Subaru sighed heavily with a look of indifference. A boy holding his mother's hand pointed towards Subaru. The boy told his mother that Subaru was awesome. Subaru was a bit embarrassed and stood at attention. Then Subaru smiled sweetly and broadly blushing slightly with eyes sparkling with joy. Subaru raised his hand and shot a red beam of light from it. Subaru thought that they were the players. Subaru stood up and waved at the boy below, smiling widely and blushing slightly. His eyes glowed with rainbow colors and a red aura emanated from him. Subaru continued to argue that they were like the guardians of humanity. Subaru looked straight ahead with a serious expression, his eyes sparkling with rainbow colors. Subaru said they continued to close the gates. Subaru stood sideways, resting the red sword on his shoulder, with a rainbow aura emanating from him. Subaru added that this was how they leveled up. Subaru climbed to the rooftop where a black-haired girl with a red streak knelt on one knee before him. Subaru looked at the girl and the people behind her dressed in long white robes with patterns on the back. Subaru thought they should do this to prevent the destruction of the world. The black-haired girl with the red streak closed her eyes and opened her mouth slightly. The girl with the red streak said that Subaru had done well. The boy with piercings grinned widely, baring his teeth. The boy with the headband looked at Subaru calmly and smiled slightly. 
The boy with piercing said it seemed like Subaru was very popular. Subaru asked them to stop. Subaru smiled awkwardly and looked aside, raising his hand. Subaru said that not long ago he was treated like an insect. Subaru sadly lowered his eyes. Subaru remembered standing in a green tracksuit looking disappointed. Subaru was covered in bruises and looked down somewhere with a sad expression. Subaru looked at the boys seriously. Subaru said they needed to overcome everything together. Subaru looked at the boys smiling and behind them was a large red door. Subaru thought that those days were filled with life-threatening situations. A stunning rainbow door appeared. Subaru mentioned that everything began when he walked through this door. His bloodshot, dark-haired eyes filled with terror stared straight ahead. He sat on the floor, facing a rainbow-colored door adorned with a hieroglyph of five stars. Subaru realized that this door could change his life. His face was in terrible condition, covered in bruises and blood, as he reached out for the door. With a heavy sigh, his weary hand finally grasped the golden door handle. Furious figures in dark clothing stared ahead with intense eyes and clenched jaws. One wore a cap and a blue shirt while another had blue hair and a sweater with a spider web pattern. The blue-haired guy pointed forward and alerted his comrade that the battered man was about to enter the rainbow door. The guy in the cap used his magic, surrounding his hand with bright flames, and warned Subaru not to mess with them. With a bloodthirsty thought, the cap-wearing guy aimed to finish off the wounded Subaru. Subaru, bruised and beaten, knew this was the second time he had faced such a situation. With broken teeth burning in the fire, he doubled over in pain. In his green tracksuit, half of his legs burned off. Subaru crawled towards the rainbow door and grasped the handle. His face was a picture of horror, and he screamed in desperation. Enveloped in a red aura, he realized that he wouldn't allow the same mistake to happen again. Despite all the pain and his dire state, Subaru didn't lose hope and continued to look forward with determination and anger. It's when he reached the rainbow door with his injured hand, he managed to open it. Bright white rays of light spilled out. Subaru felt that this time the door would be his. Wearing a now-torn green suit from battles, he looked into the door's space. Series the hooligans behind him yelled at the exhausted guy who could barely stand. They called him names like Scoundrel and Miserable Worm. Bloodied and gritting his teeth, Subaru continued to fight against his circumstances. Squinting, he knew he wouldn't let anyone else take this door, even if it cost him his life. Exhausted, Subaru longed for the door to be his, and that was his only goal. Two young boys, one blonde sitting on the sofa and the other dark-haired kneeling behind it, were watching the news on TV. The broadcast announced that today, Japan's first gold-ranked player, Hirosaka Renji, would be appearing in their studio. A blonde boy in a black suit, with a malicious smile on the TV, greeted the audience enthusiastically. This was the gold player Haka, admired by many, a dark-haired boy with glasses named Arsubaru who was 15 years old at the time, watched in amazement, his mouth open in awe. Subaru approached his younger brother, saying, Hirosaka is on TV, isn't that amazing? The blonde boy, with a displeased grin in his cheek resting on his hand, it was Eric Taiga, who was 13 years old then. Taiga responded, Annoyed, you're so loud, Subaru. However, Subaru stood his ground. He stood over the sofa, looking puzzled at his frowning younger brother. Are you okay, Subaru? asked, reminding him that he was his older brother. Taiga snapped, We're not blood brothers, so stop acting like you are. Subaru's face fell, hurt by his brother's harsh words. On the TV, a brown monster with a beak-like mouth and several small yellow eyes was shown destroying everything around it. The news reported that the incident involving the otherworldly gate and Mr. Hirosaka had occurred the previous day. The gate, discovered too late in an empty apartment, had unleashed creatures causing a disaster that claimed 13 lives. Hirosaka on TV closed his eyes in sorrow as he confirmed the news. The TV showed the apartment where the red otherworldly gate with a countdown timer had been found. It was known that these gates were sealed by creatures from within and that conventional weapons were ineffective against them. The countdown was displayed until the gate finally opened, releasing ferocious creatures into the world. Haker raised his finger and highlighted important information, causing the presenter to look at him with four widened eyes. Haka explained, There is only one way to stop this. We, the chosen players for the summoning doors, must enter them before the time expires and defeat the otherworldly creatures. He closed his eyes and added yesterday's incident was sudden and tragic. He recalled how he defeated that enormous brown monster by stabbing it with his huge, glowing sword. The presenter noted that Mr. Hirosaka saved everyone by taming the creature that had infiltrated their world. She added that he did it with a single blow despite that an enemy's enormous size. It was a spectacular sight. However, Hirosaka still looked upset, sighing slightly in his seat in the television studio. He was three saddened that he hadn't had time to prevent the incident and the high number of casualties. The presenter, in a pink shirt, 
exclaimed and tried Tony and uplift the public spirit, pointing out that without Hirosaka, there would have been even more victims. She looked five at Hirosaka with admiration and a smile on her face. She added that all citizens considered him a two hero. Hirosaka continued to look at the camera with a sad grin and closed eyes. He warned the people, one saying that to prevent such a disaster from happening again, they must inform him immediately upon discovering a gate. Hirosaka opened his eyes and looked at directly at the audience through the screen with a confident gaze. Hisik stated, people like us, the players will be able to protect you from otherworldly creatures, even at the cost of our lives. Little Subaru watched the broadcast with admiration, his eyes practically sparkling. He thought to himself, Heike is definitely a real hero because he seven risks his life to protect others. He said aloud, I think these players are really strong. Five years ago, red magical energy hovered in the air forming small blocks. The enormous and terrifying gate, surrounded by bright red energy and illuminated by torch flames, suddenly appeared. Otherworldly gates began to manifest all over the world. Swarms of ferocious monsters emerged from these gates, attacking soldiers who fought back with guns. However, the machine guns were useless, and humanity began to lose hope. But one day, these gates were conquered. It was Hirosaka who stood in a suit amidst the blazing flames, holding his massive glowing sword, surrounded by the silhouettes of other players. He was the chosen one who entered the door of challenge that appeared alongside the gate. In other words, he was a player. Among the doors, there were gold, silver, and bronze, each representing a different rank from weakest to strongest. The gold-ranked players were the most powerful, and by protecting the population, they earned high status, honor, and a significant amount of money. Harasika stood near a huge pile of money, his sword in hand, looking ahead with contempt as the crowd cheered. Such a player was considered impeccable, a role model. The news anchor addressing her esteemed guests asked what kind of person one must be to become such a player. Harasaka put his hand to his chest and glanced at the presenter. He explained that standing at the call door taught them to choose the person whose soul sparkled the brightest. Tagai continued watching the broadcast, slightly tilting his head while sitting on the sofa. He found Harusaka's words amusing, thinking he himself didn't seem like such a person. With a malicious grin, Taige looked at his brother, ready to speak, but his face suddenly turned frightened and frowning. Subaru was staring ahead at the light with a curious gaze. A gold-ranked door had appeared directly in their home. Subaru gazed at the gold-colored door in admiration. He thought that if he also walked through that door, he too would become a one-player. Subaru, sitting on the floor, touched the golden door, about to open it. His hand was already on the handle when suddenly, Taija rushed to the door and shoved his older brother aside. Subaru was thrown violently to the floor, dissatisfied. Opening one eye slightly, he looked at Taija and asked, What's the matter? Subaru watched as Tage clutched the golden door handle, baring his eyes and throwing a malicious grin towards Subaru. Three Taigai sarcastically apologized to his brother, stating bloodthirstily that the door would be his. Subaru scrambled to his feet and ran towards Taiga, extending his hand to stop him. But Taigie had already closed the door on Subaru. Three years later, Subaru, now 18, was hanging half dead and half naked from a web of ropes tied around him on a huge platform with white buildings. A heavy stone flew towards Subaru at high speed. Grimacing in pain, Subaru closed his eyes and sighed slightly as the stone hit him. Three guys with malicious grins, mocked the immobilized Subaru, using his body as a target, throwing rocks and scoring points based on where they hit him. Like in a game, led by a guy in a spiderweb patterned sweater with blue hair, the bullies tried to hit Subaru in the head, worth 10 points in their twisted game. Sweating and terrified by the hopelessness of his situation, Subaru looked at them with tearful eyes. The blue-haired guy raised his hand to his face as another, with purple curls, chuckled. The guy in the sweater taunted Subaru, telling him to at least try to dodge the rocks, Another guy in a shirt grinned, pointing out Subaru's lack of evasion skills. As the blue-haired bully prepared to throw another stone, he noticed someone standing nearby. Taiga, now mature and wearing a white shirt and yellow t-shirt, had arrived accompanied by a petite girl who hugged him. Furrowing his eyebrows, Taiga looked ahead disdainfully. That day, Subaru's younger brother, who had once knocked him off his golden door, returned alive. Subaru's face looked sad and upset. That very day, a bloody Taiji walked out of the golden door with a malicious grin. The young Taiga cast his sharp gaze towards Subaru who was sitting on the floor. That day, Taiye became the youngest player in Japan. He looked with contempt at Subaru hanging in the web and called the sight pathetic. Subaru peeked out from under his long bangs with a sad, tear-stained face. The three bullies who tormented Subaru were bronze-class players. Taiga, with a grin, said he was tired of being called his little brother, even though they weren't related by blood. Two Subaru, looking down dejectedly watched as Taiga walked up to the bronze-class players and took the stone from them. His hand lit up with a bright, flamey skill, 
A huge stream of bright light energy was emitted above the building. The bronze players scrunched their faces, closing their eyes from the cloud of dust. Subaru's face looked lost in the rising dust. The guy gave you a fighting pose, using his golden hand skill, raising his golden armored hand above his head. The bronze class guys stood together, trying to defend against the blazing fire surrounding them. Shocked and horrified, they watched Agiji's powerful display. Immobilized and tied up, Subaru contorted his face in hopelessness. Delighted with his strength, Tagaiga swung his golden hand, launching the stone at high speed. It flew past Subaru's bound body with incredible force, tearing part of the web and flying far into the sky, sparkling like a star. Bronze-level players were astonished, their mouths open in amazement. One noticed that the throw scattered a bunch of clouds. The blue-haired guy, baring his teeth, remarked that gold-ranked players were simply monsters. Subaru wet his pants out of fear, visible to everyone. Exhausted and thin, Subaru hung on the web, his head down. The bullies noticed. Taiga knitted his eyebrows and raised high side head, then lower errant eyes they could do whatever they wanted to Subaru, even kill him. <laughs> Four instantly puzzled. The three looked at each other. Tired of hanging, Subaru dripped with sweat and drool. The bullies sarcastically wondered what they would do with Subaru's body. Passersby, a guy and a girl, noticed the bullying and planned to take a picture. Subaru's naked body lay on the ground, his belongings scattered. They realized this was the guy constantly bullied, now suffering at the player's hands. They noted Subaru and his brother were complete opposites. Exhausted, Subaru barely sighed. The girl remarked she would have already killed herself in his place. In a large lit two-story house, the news reported on the otherworldly gates. A presenter in a black suit pointed to a map showing incident locations. They announced the gates in Kato, Sujunami, and Shinal were destroyed. Taiyi, with an arrogant look, walked past the audience in a black terry jacket. The presenter noted that gold-ranked player Taiga had prevented four incidents with otherworldly gates. In honor of five of these events, a bottle of champagne was opened. Tagai sat at a large table with his seven parents, celebrating his victory. Taigai's father, holding a bottle of alcohol, was proud of his son's success. His brown-haired mother raised her glass of sparkling champagne, noting that despite still studying, Tigai was already providing for them, looking like a real son supporting his family. Nine, she proudly mentioned her blood flowed in eleven him and was happy about his birth. She turned her glass towards Taigai's father, who looked away, unhappy. Taigai's mother noticed that their son was nothing like the worthless boy his father had with his mistress. Taigai's father just snorted in response. Meanwhile, Subaru's father furrowed his eyebrows and sneered contemptuously. Beside the large house of Taigai's family, there stood a small hut resembling a garage. Taigai's father referred to his other son as a remarkable mistake of nature. Inside this tiny closet, Subaru, battered and bruised, sat at a table doing his homework. Tagaija raised a bottle to his face, realizing it was empty. Dressed in a white robe and holding a wad of money, he headed toward the balcony. Subaru, with fear in his eyes, glanced sideways when he was called, referred to as a bug. Subaru stepped out of his wooden closet and responded. Arrogantly, Taigei stuck his hand with money out the window and looked down at Subaru. He ordered Subaru to go buy some soda, ensuring not to mix up the brands. Fearful, Subaru stood by the closet door, eyes wide with fright, staring at Taigei. He said he still needed to finish his homework, but Taiga immediately dismissed this, calling it a lame excuse. Taiga looked at his older brother arrogantly and placed the money on Subaru's head. Subaru, you belong to me for the rest of your life. And now you'll live in a bug cage, Tagaiga declared. He crumpled the bill into a ball and threw it at Subaru's face, who only managed to touch his cheek and close his eyes. Don't even think about running away, Taige remarked. Subaru, holding a purple bag filled with soda bottles, walked from the store through the night alley, feeling deeply saddened by his situation. He thought to himself that with such a life standard, he wouldn't have many free years left. The thought horrified him, as this was what his life had become. He recalled Taiga's contemptuous look and continued to reflect on his position in society, remembering Taiga's words that his life belonged to him. Subaru imagined what would happen in 10 years if his exhausted and weak body lay in the garage sheltering from the scorching heat. He understood he would die from the heat in summer and the cold in winter in this bug cage. This time, his body was covered with wooden plywood as he tried to keep warm in severe frost. He imagined himself doing all the household chores like mowing the lawn, mopping the floors, and washing clothes. He thought he would work until he passed out, constantly scolded by his parents for being useless, treated like a pathetic worm. His hand grabbed the door frame as he imagined himself old, gray, and covered in acne, still obeying arrogant Taigi, bowing at his feet to buy soda again. Even with age and experience, he would still look up to people, waking up to reality. 
Subaru's face showed worry and disappointment about his potential future. He realized he didn't want such a life. Subaru threw the soda pack on the ground, grabbing his head in panic and hysteria. It hurt him deeply. Why did such things only happen to him? He wished he could go back to the day when he sat at the golden door, almost opening it. He wouldn't let anyone near that shimmering door. Holding his face in horror, he grimaced in pain and confusion about what to do next. He felt it would be better to die than live such a life. There's three bronze-ranked bullies approached from behind, one wearing a blue shirt and holding a sword. They mockingly greeted Subaru, calling him a bug. Fearful, Subaru turned around and recognized the same bully with the cap who had tormented him. The red-haired bully sarcastically noted that it was an unexpected and unfortunate meeting for Subaru, saying they were terribly tired after the confrontation at the gate. Bronze-ranked bully, staring ahead with gritted teeth and a bloody face, told Subaru to imagine the creature from the gate touching his face and leaving scars. Noting how painful the bronze rank was, the bully with the cap drew a dagger and pointed it towards Subaru's face, who looked terrified. Sarcastically, he asked Subaru to go on a date with him so he could blow off some steam. Suddenly, Subaru stood up and began running in the opposite direction. The bullies grinned as Subaru tried to run as fast as he could, knowing he had little chance of escaping. The boy in the blue shirt and cap placed his hand on his belt, laughing at Subaru's attempt to flee. The boy with the dagger raised his hand to his head, grimacing in pain. The boy in the orange hoodie turned to his friend, asking if they should go to the hospital first. With a bloody face, he looked at the fleeing Subaru and sarcastically suggested they deal with Subaru first, noting they had permission from Taiga. Subaru dressed in green, ran as fast as he could, not daring to look back engulfed in terror. The bullies quickly caught up with him, running beside him with mocking grins. The red-haired boy raised his hand to his face, saying that Subaru was facing inevitable death. The boy in the orange sweater ran next to him, shouting for Subaru to try harder. The boy in the cap swung his blade through the air, the blade slicing into Subaru's back, causing him to clutch his face in pain and sigh. Subaru realized he had been cut. The three bronze-ranked bullies ran alongside him, their bloodthirsty gazes fixed on their prey. Ah, Subaru understood that these bullies intended to kill him. He didn't want such a fate for himself. Attacked from behind with a sharp blade, Subaru screamed in pain as blood poured out. He realized that just moments ago, he'd been contemplating death. Now wounded, Subaru tried to escape from these villains, holding his wounded hand. He didn't want to die. His face looked pitiful, tears streaming down as he realized his situation was dire, and he had no choice. The boy in the cap ran alongside Subaru and grabbed his hand, saying that the spot they were heading to would be perfect. He pushed Subaru's injured body into a narrow space where Subaru lay on the ground, trying to cover his face, lying face down against the wall, supporting himself with one arm. Subaru turned back in horror as the bullies approached, their bloodthirsty intent clear. They stood over Subaru, mocking and preparing to torment him further. A punch landed on Subaru's face, causing him to grimace. He raised his wounded arm defensively, trying to stop the bullies. Please stop, Subaru begged through his tears. Before he could finish his plea, a powerful kick from the boy in the orange jacket struck his face. Subaru used both hands to shield himself, crying out for them to stop. Lost in his thoughts, he understood that he could die and that he was in immense pain. He wanted to die to escape this suffering. Beaten and bloody, Subaru lay nearly unconscious on the cold ground. Even the bullies were somewhat surprised by what they had done to him. The boy in the cap stood behind the frowning boy in the orange jacket with a malicious grin. Let's finish him off and use my skill, the boy in the cap suggested. Sticking his tongue out, he raised his hand, which began to glow with bright flames. This was the explosive Red Rose skill. The half-dead Subaru lay on the cold concrete, mocked by the bullies who were about to end him. Please spare me, Subaru begged. The boy in the cap smiled bloodthirstily, waving his hand, from which bright fiery light burst forth. It's time to finish off this bug, he said. Red energy blocks appeared in the air. The boy in the orange jacket looked displeased with what was happening. Suddenly, a bronze door appeared right where the boy in the orange jacket stood, causing the boy in the cap to freeze with his hand raised. Subaru, heavily beaten and bruised, also noticed the sudden appearance of the door. The boy in the cap lowered his hand, his face showing astonishment. Kunisaki, get away! <gasps> the boy in the cap tried to call out to his friend. But the bronze door simply cut the boy in the orange jacket in half. All the remaining bullies stared at the bloody bronze door that had killed their friend. The scarred face of the red-haired boy looked confused. A boy with long blue hair peeked through his bangs in horror. They saw the bronze door appear and cut their friend in half. The magical bronze door with five stars was covered in blood. Subaru found the strength to stand up and take a closer look at the bronze door. It began to crack, revealing bright rays of light from within. 
Suddenly, it transformed into a silver door with five stars. Be a blue-haired boy bared his teeth, looking at what was happening in panic as he saw the silver door. In an instant, the door became golden, shining brightly before the shocked bullies. The red-haired boy frowned at the sight of the golden door. Bruised and swollen, Subaru kept his eyes on the door, supporting himself with both hands. He looked at the golden door in front of him, the handle facing him. The golden door was beautiful, emitting radiant energy. Subaru peeked out from under his bangs in admiration. The golden door began to crack again, clearly regenerating into another level. Suddenly, it transformed into a rainbow door. Subaru's face showed clear confusion at what was happening. It was a rainbow door. The angry boy with a bloody face bared his teeth, looking at the rainbow door. He didn't understand why this color appeared, thinking nothing was better than a golden door. A boy in a black sweater with a spiderweb pattern standing next to him said that if necessary, they would go through this door. It would be good to go back, Subaru thought. The rainbow door emitted more light and energy. The bronze-ranked bullies realized there was no handle on the door, but understood that the handle was on Subaru's side. Two of the bullies realized in horror that only Subaru, whom they considered a bug, could open the door. The boy in the cap clearly intended not to let Subaru through and was preparing his sinister plan. This time, Subaru reached for the handle and prepared to open it. He felt that this time he must open the door. Beaten and bloody, Subaru looked at the rainbow door as if it were his last chance in life. The bronze-ranked bullies looked at Subaru with anger and rage, realizing he was about to enter. The boy in the cap opened his mouth and shouted, Subaru, don't you dare. With his last strength, Subaru raised his head and looked at the door. The boy in the cap screamed that he would kill Subaru. This moment was happening for the second time for Subaru. He remembered the day when the first golden door appeared before him in that room. He felt that the mistake could not be repeated. The angry boy in the cap waved his hand, directing a stream of fire directly at Subaru. The force of the blast sent Subaru flying forward, his legs torn apart. In such agony, Subaru, covered in blood, began to scream at the sky. He recalled the moment when his frail body hung in the spider web and was mocked as he fell from the web, lying on the ground with his belongings scattered around. He remembered Taiga's contemptuous, sneering smile. Everyone considered him a pathetic bug. Subaru found strength becoming angry, furrowing his brows, clearly not wanting to miss his chance. He understood that this time, the door would be his. The bronze-ranked bullies watched intently, calling him various names and cursing him. Bloodied and legless, Subaru crawled toward the rainbow door. He didn't want to give up and was ready to fight for it at any cost, even his life. It, the rainbow door was almost closing. Moments later, it slammed shut, blocking the entrance to others. Subaru recalled the day when the first golden door appeared before him in that room. He felt that the mistake could not be repeated. A giant golden fist swung through the air. It was power. Taige sat beside his girlfriend, drinking red wine. It was status. Harisaka appeared on TV. It was honor. A pile of banknotes lay in a heap. It was wealth. These were all things Subaru should have achieved. Exhausted, Subaru crawled into the space and lay there spent. Tired and wounded, Subaru lay on the ground, leaning on it with his eyes closed. He had to regain everything he had lost. Above Subaru's body, a rectangular blue window glowed in the rainbow-lit space. A message appeared, Welcome Ariak Subaru. Subaru lay there exhausted and motionless, his head resting on his wounded arm. A purple clawed foot appeared in front of his head. It was a clawed paw lying right next to Subaru's immobile head. A message appeared. Rainbow challenge begins. Before Subaru, a purple monster with sharp teeth and a tattered cloak resembling a potato sack appeared, seemingly a hologram. The monster grinned menacingly, its mouth full of terrifying teeth. It grabbed Subaru's head who lay unconscious with his eyes closed. From that day forward, Subaru's history began. He lay face down on the floor as a monster in a brown robe approached him. The monster extended its finger with its long, sharp nail towards Subaru's head and pierced it deeply. As the monster sat there with its finger embedded in Subaru's head, white lightning bolts emerged from Subaru and a notification appeared. System update, bodily damage regenerated. Myopia eliminated. The monster grinned, keeping its finger in Subaru's head. Another notification appeared. Seven seconds until legs are fully regenerated. Six, five. Suddenly, Subaru's heart began to beat. A notification read, heart and lungs reactivated. Subaru's eyes snapped open, his body convulsed in pain, and he screamed loudly tears streaming down his face. Subaru awoke, staring straight ahead in shock. In front of him was the rainbow-hued monster, grinning widely with bared teeth. Subaru recoiled in sudden fear and screamed. The monster stood up, turned, and walked away. Subaru's head swiveled from side to side, looking around as the monster moved toward its throne. 
He remembered what had happened and how he had crawled through the rainbow door. He realized what lay behind the rainbow door, thinking that this was indeed the room's appearance. The monster sat on the throne, smirking with displeasure, resting its head on its hand. Hirosaka sat at a table in the studio, with a girl in a pink dress beside him. She asked Hirosaka what was behind the door. Hirosaka smiled gently, explaining that everything in his space was made of gold, resembling a medieval castle, which was the master's residence. The girl, looking surprised, asked what he meant by master. A knight clad in golden armor, holding a gleaming golden sword, stood in the middle of the hall. Hirosaka said that behind each door was a master of the space, and future players must meet them and accept the challenge. Subaru knelt on the white floor with the rainbow door behind him and the monster on the throne in front. He realized he couldn't see anything but the monster, which sat on the throne, smirking with displeasure, with one leg up on the throne and its head resting on its hand, nervously baring his teeth and wide-eyed. Subaru brought his finger to his lips, wondering what would happen next. Hirosaka, looking straight ahead with a serious gaze, said the master was a knight in golden armor, emitting a brilliant golden light. The knight held a massive golden sword in one hand and a golden shield in the other. Hirosaka stood before the knight, holding his sword to the side, saying that the knight recognized him after he stabbed him with the sword and that he had received a portion of the knight's power. Closing his eyes and smiling gently, Hirosaka added that he received part of the power in the form of the sword. Subaru lowered his head in confusion, thinking the challenge was to attack the master once. He looked at the monster in bewilderment, thinking he should attack it. Kneeling in the infinite white space, Subaru remarked that he needed to hit something clearly, the monster. The monster sighed heavily in displeasure. Subaru gave a nervous smile, staring at the monster, which then turned back to face him. Fear and panic were clear on Subaru's face as he couldn't understand why the monster could talk. The monster scratched its head with its finger, sarcastically asking Subaru how long he intended to sit there since his body should have been fully recovered by now, even joking that Subaru might have brain damage. Confused, Subaru said, he thought his brain was fine. Noting that the monster was good at talking, the monster sitting on the throne raised a hand, telling Subaru not to hesitate and to quickly accept the challenge, adding that it had told Subaru to hit it and that it would grant Subaru power. Fearful Subaru asked who the monster was, spreading his arms in confusion. He said he had only heard about the gold, silver, and bronze doors, never about the rainbow door. The monster bared its teeth and yelled at Subaru, asking why he cared. The monster waved its hand towards Subaru, creating a powerful blow that cut through the air. Kneeling, Subaru covered his head with his hands as a strong explosion occurred beside him, filling the space with smoke and dust, overcoming his fear. Subaru bared his teeth and opened his eyes wide, looking at the rising clouds of smoke, thinking the blow couldn't have hit him. The monster tapped the throne with its finger, suddenly becoming angry, leaning towards Subaru and telling him to do something quickly so it could go back to sleep. Trembling with fear, Subaru said he couldn't stand because his legs were shaking. The monster, surprised by the answer, grabbed Subaru's head with its hand, lowering it slightly, not understanding why Subaru was chosen. The monster bared its teeth in displeasure, waving its hand down, causing a red weapon to appear before Subaru, who recoiled in fear. Several red weapons floated above Subaru, causing him to panic and scream in fear. The monster bared its teeth in displeasure, raised its hand, and pointed at the weapons while emitting a rainbow aura. The monster told Subaru that if he was afraid, he should use a weapon. And if that didn't work, to find another place, adding that he should just turn around and leave through the rainbow door behind him. Holding his head in his hands, Subaru looked down at the floor, contemplating whether he should attack the monster. Bearing its teeth, the monster crossed its legs, emitting a brilliant rainbow aura. Subaru turned to the door, tears in his eyes, contemplating returning to his old life. Slowly, Subaru tried to move his legs towards the door, the monster smiling and resting its hand on its chin. Subaru reached the door and knelt before it, grabbing the handle. The monster asked if he was serious, and Subaru looked at the door in horror. The monster told Subaru that if he didn't want power, he shouldn't have opened the door. Subaru thought the monster was right, but was scared and felt the monster wouldn't understand, just like anyone else with power. Holding the door handle, Subaru didn't know what to do recalling how he was treated like a bug. Taiga looked to the side with pity, his eyes glowing yellow, calling Subaru a bug. Three people looked straight ahead mockingly, calling Subaru a bug, their terrifying faces with black eyes and wide smiles staring down at Subaru. The monster, sitting with its legs crossed and arms slightly folded, told Subaru that if he wanted to continue crawling on all fours, he could. Subaru, baring his teeth and crying, looked up with tears in his eyes, staring straight ahead. The monster said Subaru saw his reflection in the door, 
where he was old and gray, and he would bear the burden of his choices. An old, wrinkled, gray-haired Subaru was reflected in the door with a look of horror. Tears and snot streamed down his face as Subaru covered his reflection, hiding it. The monster leaned forward, baring its teeth, and Subaru begged it to stop, placing a hand on the door. Subaru continued to plead, banging on the door with his hand and shouting for it to stop. Turning slightly to look at the monster, Subaru said they all made it sound so easy. The monster smiled cheerfully and widely. Subaru turned to the monster, clenching his fists and closing his eyes, asking if having power meant doing whatever they wanted and calling others pathetic. The monster sneered, tilting its head slightly to the side, and laughed wickedly, shouting at Subaru that of course they could do all that. Still crying, Subaru opened his mouth wide and shouted at the monster to stop bothering him. Subaru remembered lying on the ground, covering himself with his hands, saying it hurt to be beaten, recalling how he lay on the ground naked with his belongings scattered around, and added that not being treated like a human also hurt, saying that should be obvious. Subaru closed his eyes, raising his head and hands, shouting why no one understood this. The monster continued to laugh, saying Subaru had gone mad. Subaru opened his eyes, looking at the monster with all his anger, telling it to shut up and calling it a monster. Subaru moved forcefully towards the monster, which covered its mouth in surprise. The Subaru clenched his fist, swinging them at the monster and telling it to give him power. The monster bared its sharp teeth in a wide grin, and Subaru punched the monster square in the face. Subaru stared at the monster with blank eyes as white lightning flashed from the creature's face. Shocked that he had landed the punch, Subaru watched the monster rise from its throne, smiling. Clenching his fist, Subaru heard the monster say he could do that whenever he wanted. The monster patted Subaru's shoulder, saying it was amazing, a blow driven by hatred, and that he had never seen such rage in Subaru's eyes before. The monster, resting its hand on Subaru's shoulder, said Subaru suited him well. Then, the monster bit down on Subaru's shoulder with its sharp teeth. Subaru winced in pain, his mouth open and eyes wide. The monster clung to Subaru's shoulder, emitting a red aura, and red lightning bolts appeared on Subaru's face. Subaru screamed in agony, thinking the monster would kill him despite its words. With his mouth wide open, Subaru, his face covered in red lightning, bit into the monster's shoulder, determined to seize the power for himself. The monster did not expect such a move from Subaru. Subaru kept his teeth sunk into the monster's shoulder. The monster remarked that Subaru was fascinating and added that he would serve him well. Subaru, still biting hard, was surprised by what he heard. They stood there, teeth embedded in each other's shoulders as a brilliant rainbow light enveloped them, covering Subaru in rainbow lightning. Subaru rolled his eyes and released the monster, stepping back. The monster, grinning widely, looked at Subaru. A system notification appeared. Call completed. Subaru fell unconscious, his mouth agape, eyes rolled back with rainbow lightning emanating from him. Player body restoration initiated. The monster smiled softly, saying they would meet again. Subaru remained unconscious, with rainbow lightning flowing from him. The monster told Subaru that he had asked who he was. Smiling broadly, the monster said his name was Vanquish. Vanquish extended his arms, glowing with rainbow light, and praised Subaru for being amazing. Vanquish laughed joyfully and gradually faded into thin air, dissolving into rainbow dust. As Vanquish almost vanished, only his clawed hand remained. Call completed. Subaru has become a player. Rank. Vampire True Ancestor. Abilities unlocked. Subaru opened his eyes looking exhausted, and repeated Vanquish's name. Glee Key Aquashin. Blood Manipulation Level 1. Rainbow Skill Bonus. Unlock Additional Rewards. Steps Before the Eyes. Level 1. Hatred of Brightness. Level 1. Usurpation of Blood. Level 1. Subaru's eyes turned rainbow-colored as another system notification appear. The challenge world no longer exists. Subaru lay on the ground, staring upward in confusion, unsure of what had happened. A system notification appeared. Player, exit the room within 30 seconds. A large crack appeared on the ground. Subaru remained lying there, noticing the surface gradually disappear. The area behind the rainbow door almost vanished. Subaru said he still couldn't move. In front of Subaru, the door began to fall into the void. Subaru reached out toward the door, but the surface collapsed beneath him, and he started to fall into the dark abyss. Subaru plummeted into an undefined void and darkness, with a faint light emanating from him. The rainbow door began to shatter into pieces. Two boys watched as the rainbow door was destroyed. The boy in the cap said the door was collapsing. The other boy with green hair looked astonished. Both were furious at what was happening. The green-haired boy said, if the door disappeared like that, Subaru had failed the call and was dead. The boy in the cap bared his teeth and frowned, saying it was the worst possible outcome. The rainbow door almost disappeared. 
The boy in the cap held his head in his hands, and the green-haired boy looked sorrowfully away. They turned toward the door and were surprised. Subaru flew out of the small rainbow space. The boy in the cap bared his teeth, and the green-haired boy's mouth fell open, eyes wide. Subaru stood with wide eyes, rainbow fragments from the door swirling around him. The boy in the cap and the green-haired boy did not expect to see Subaru. They were astonished. The boy in the cap frowned and bared his teeth. Subaru crouched slightly, extending his arms and smiling softly. Rainbow fragments floated around Subaru. Some said Subaru was now a player. Subaru looked at them, his eyes now glowing rainbow. The two bullies glared at Subaru with angry eyes, shouting his name. The black-haired boy Nil, looking at them with surprise and confusion as one of the bullies asked if he had also become a player. Lowering his eyes and staring at a point, Subaru tried to understand what was happening. Standing up, he faced the two boys holding weapons and placed his hand on his chest. He remembered that he had just gained power from Vanquish. A slash appeared before him. The red-haired boy lunged and swung his sword at Subaru, but Subaru managed to step back, blocking the attack. The bully gritted his teeth and bared them. Subaru raised his hand as the red-haired boy pointed the blade at him. He asked him to stop, but the bully rudely told him to shut up and asked how he dared enter that door. Clenching his fists, Subaru looked at him with fear in his eyes, asking what he meant. At that moment, he thought that the door was indeed meant for him. Looking at him with hatred, the red-haired boy swung his sword again, saying that Subaru must die. Gritting his teeth, Subaru stepped back, his dark eyes wide with fear. A moment later, his pupils began to glow with all the colors of the rainbow. He observed the bully's attack in slow motion, watching the blade pass by his head. Subaru tried to understand what it was. He thought he could see everything. The bully swung his sword again. Subaru ducked and the blade passed over him. The red-haired boy looked at him with surprise. Crouching, Subaru watched his attacker, realizing he was seeing everything in slow motion. Clenching the hilt, the bully gritted his teeth and swung his sword again. Subaru thought this boy was also a player. With little effort, he dodged the blade. He realized his attacker was indeed much faster than a normal human. He saw all his moves beforehand, thinking every path of the blade was clear. Subaru dodged all the swift attacks of the bully, thinking he could see them clearly. A boy with gray hair covering one eye watched the fight with his mouth open. He asked in amazement what was happening now. Gritting his teeth, the red-haired bully cursed and swung his sword again. He stared straight at Subaru, who was dodging his attacks with a blank expression. A moment later, the black-haired boy grabbed his hand, blocking the series of strikes. Subaru, looking at his attacker, loudly demanded him to stop. Looking at the boy, the bully cursed and gritted his teeth in anger. He looked down and saw that Subaru's entire body was trembling with fear. The bully smiled broadly, baring his teeth. Subaru looked at him as the attacker called his name. Grimacing with anger, the red-haired boy asked in a low voice who he was. Stepping back, Subaru released his hand, and looking at the bully with fearful eyes, apologized in a stuttering voice. The attacker suddenly moved his leg forward, kicking Subaru in the stomach with all his strength. Raising his fist, the bully opened his mouth wide and shouted that he was weak. Gritting his teeth, the black-haired boy moved to the side, and the bully's attack hit the wall. His fist glowed orange, and he struck the face of the fleeing boy. Holding his bruised cheek, Subaru shouted that it hurt. Touching his face, he looked down, surprised to find no scratch. His eyes widened in surprise, and the system window was reflected in them. Two bars HP and MP appeared before him, and the system informed that the HP stat represented his vitality. Now fully restored to 155 out of 173. The boy stared at the blue hologram image in amazement. The system warned that if this stat dropped to zero, he would be unable to fight, so he needed to avoid getting hurt. Subaru wondered if this was a player tutorial. He looked at his HP and MP stats. What happened before his eyes changed? A map of the area appeared in the corner of the screen, with arrows indicating the distance to others and markers over the bullies' his heads. Subaru realized this was a feature only players could see. He looked at the red-haired bully, clenching his fists and touching his bruised face. Subaru smiled, understanding why he didn't feel pain after the blow. He understood that he had truly become a player. The red-haired bully looked at him, teeth clenched, thinking whether his punch had really had no effect. Frowning, he turned to his companion, who was pointing at Subaru with a shocked expression. He told Solitari that he thought Subaru could now see the menu and fight with it. The gray-haired boy stood frozen, pointing straight ahead while Solitari tried to silence him. The thug recalled that morning when they had mocked a boy chained by spider webs. He rudely remarked, Subaru wet his pants earlier and nothing has changed. Solitari activated his red rose skill. Opening his mouth, he roared and a fireball formed in his palm. He hurled the fireball forcefully towards Subaru. 
As the fireball approached, Subaru realized it was the thug's skill. He watched the fire get closer. Sawatari grinned maliciously, thinking Subaru was finished. Suddenly, Sawatari's eyes widened in shock. Toxic smoke began rising in the smoke. Subaru stood with gritted teeth, hands raised to shield himself. He squinted and rubbed the scratches on his face, feeling a terrible sting. He thought that after this attack, he would surely die. Glancing at his HP bar, he saw it drop to 121 units. He noted that his health had significantly decreased and he couldn't take many more hits like this. Lowering his hands, Sawatari looked at him in surprise. His teeth clenched, thinking this couldn't be happening. He thought the effect of Red Rose should have blown Subaru to pieces. The thug stared at Subaru, who was rubbing his eyes in the scratches. I saw Atari wondered how Subaru could withstand such hits. Questioning the damage level of his skill, the gray-haired boy glanced at his friend and called his name. He suggested they should leave now, adding that Subaru had entered that strange door, and they didn't know if it was stronger and cooler than gold. Sawatari gritted his teeth, veins bulging on his forehead. He swore loudly at his friend, telling him to use his brain. The red-haired thug looked at Subaru, who was still touching the scratches. He shouted that now was their chance, and if Subaru's level increased, they definitely couldn't handle him. Glaring at Subaru with hatred, Sawatari gripped his sword again. He declared they had to stop him, and Subaru's first day as a player would be his last. Subaru looked at Sawatari, who was holding the sword in front of him, talking to his companions. He thought they were planning something. Now rubbing his head and looking to the side, Subaru thought he still had a chance to escape. Suddenly, dark threads shot toward him. Subaru watched in surprise as the threads wrapped tightly around his body, a struggling to break free. Subaru remembered being chained to the wall similarly that morning. He realized these were the same threads. Leaning forward, the gray-haired thug touched the ground, activating his skill, and the ash and threads started emanating from his fingertips. Gritting his teeth, Subaru jerked in different directions, but realized the threads weren't easily breakable. Holding his sword tightly, Sawatari rushed toward the bound Subaru. Mouth open wide, he screamed that Subaru you would die. Still trying to break free, Subaru saw the thug approaching. He thought his situation was dire and suddenly remembered he had some skill too. Looking at the attacker with fearful eyes, he considered activating his skill. Gritting his teeth as the sharp sword got closer, he thought he didn't know how to use his skill. He heard the sound of a strike and then blood spurting. At that moment, Subaru had his eyes closed and something bright red protruded from his head. Opening his eyes, he saw it. To his astonishment, the attacker's sword was held in midair by two blood blades. Subaru had several blood blades protruding from his body, one of which had pierced Sawatari's abdomen. Mouth agape, the thug started coughing up blood. The space behind Subaru began to glow red, and a purple hand with claws emerged from it. A voice said his skill was blood manipulation. Turning around, Subaru loudly asked if it was Vanquish. While Sawatari stood frozen in pain, Subaru faced the voice. Vanquish remarked that Subaru was troublesome and said he would show him how to use his skill just once. Subaru looked at the thug's hat impaled on one of his blood blades. Vanquish explained that blood manipulation controlled the state of blood for 10 seconds, and now it had turned into blades. Subaru stood up from the ground, staring at the blades on his body in surprise. Vanquish told him to choose the state of the blood next time. As the blade retracted from Sawatari's stomach, blood spurted everywhere. The blade started to melt, and blood dripped onto the ground. Vanquish asked if it wasn't amazing, saying Subaru could now use all his hatred. Calling Vanquish's name, Subaru looked towards the voice. A moment later, the tip of a sword appeared right next to his cornea. Subaru swiftly moved his head to the side, and Sawatari's attack missed. The red-faced thug lunged again, cursing loudly and calling Subaru a worm. Running backward, Subaru looked at him with frightened eyes, amazed that the guy kept attacking. He angrily asked why he continued doing this. Sawatari started coughing up blood again, ordering the worm to shut up. His face twisted with madness, he kept coughing blood, veins bulging on his forehead and cheeks. He screamed that Subaru had stolen the door and it was his fault Kunisaki died. He shouted that Subaru had to pay for his death. Subaru's face showed confusion and one of his eyes glowed with a rainbow color. He asked what he was talking about, noting that Kunisaki had tried to kill him. A Sawatari pointed his finger at Subaru and began to laugh loudly. He declared that Subaru had to die, noting that no one would notice his disappearance from the world and it wouldn't be a loss to anyone. Subaru looked at Sawatari, with a gloomy face as he pointed at him, saying no one needed him. Subaru bowed his head and frowned. After a moment, he closed his eyes. The boy with eyes glowing in different colors looked at his attacker with angry eyes and gritted his teeth. As Vanquish's words echoed in his mind, telling him to use all his hatred, Subaru yelled, telling the thug to stop talking nonsense. 
A moment later, Subaru began to glow brightly with all the colors of the rainbow. With a loud shout, Sop Atari swung his sword and rushed at Subaru. Gritting his teeth, Subaru clenched his fist and aimed it at the thug. The blade was quickly approaching him. Subaru continued to swing his fist with an angry face, shattering the blade into pieces. Sawatari looked at his weapon in confusion. Subaru rushed again with his fist, quickly striking his opponent's face. The red-haired thug began to fall, and Subaru clenched his other hand into a fist. Gritting his teeth, he glowed with rainbow light and looked at his attacker with a face full of hatred. As he landed a punch, Sawatari's body hit the ground and flew up while unconscious. The impact sent the thug crashing into the building's wall. His body continued to fly up quickly, nearly reaching the roof. Looking up high, the gray-haired boy with spider webs on his shirt stared at his friend's body. He watched Sawatari with fearful eyes as he fell to the ground with a loud thud. Gritting his teeth and trembling in fear, he looked at Subaru. The boy stood with a gloomy face, fists clenched, and rainbow light shimmering around his body. The gray-haired thug looked at his companion, who had several broken teeth and blood flowing all over his face. He knelt before him, looking at his face with scared eyes, wondering how Subaru could do this with just one punch. Subaru took a few steps toward them. The gray-haired boy panicked and turned his head toward Subaru. Standing up, he silently watched as Subaru slowly approached them, activating his Ashen Threads a skill. The thug wrapped Sawatari's body with one hand and pulled him towards the street with the other. Subaru stopped after noticing something. He saw a star fall out of Sawatari's limp pocket as his companion dragged him away. The gray-haired boy gritted his teeth and pulled the threads. A moment later, Subaru saw the two of them disappear into the street. He watched them flee with focused eyes. The rainbow light began to fade, and surprise appeared on Subaru's face. He asked if they had really run away. The gray-haired boy moved quickly along the street, holding his friend's body with the threads. He was amazed by Subaru's punch strength, because Subaru was still only at the first level. Subaru watched the fleeing thugs, and the figure of Vanquish appeared in his shadow. The gray-haired boy wondered what kind of monster had given Subaru such power. Rainbow light shimmered in the dark-haired boy's eyes. Breathing out, he knelt down. He asked if everything was finally over, raising his hand and clenching it into a fist. Subaru concluded that he had won. Bowing his head, Subaru chuckled softly. After a moment, he turned around realizing it was good. However, he looked at the star lying on the ground not far away. He noticed a hole in the wall. In the dark alley, Kinosaki's bisected body still lay. Looking at all of this, Subaru asked what he should do with it now. Early in the morning, a few policemen looked at the corpse with surprised eyes, and one of them took a picture. Three men stood in the alley with a dead body. One policeman said the body was cut in half, noting that it probably wasn't done by a human. The second agreed with him, and then asked if this was another monster from another world. The men tensed up and looked back when they heard a voice telling them not to worry about it. Footsteps sounded as a man walked into the alley. Hirosaka Renji, dressed in a black suit, approached the policeman. He quickly looked around and found no signs of creatures from another world in the area. The blonde man smiled lightly as the policeman greeted him warmly. The men nervously asked him to come and look at something. They handed him a card with Kunisaki's picture on it. Renji loudly said this was the bronze-ranked player Kunisaki Shiru. He stared at the card through the fabric, thinking the criminal must have a state higher than silver to cut a bronze player so easily. While he was looking at the status card, a voice echoed in his head that his soul was trembling but not his own. The man raised his bright eyes. A large figure of a knight in golden armor appeared beside him. He asked if it was Lig. Bowing his head, Renji handed his IDBD card to the policeman. He said that in any case, the criminal must be caught. He stated that players shouldn't fight each other. The blonde man's face frowned, and many black and red gates appeared in his mind. He said they had a common mission, and they must destroy as many gates as possible. Renji raised his head. He said that until then, in the blue sky, there was a countdown hologram showing 21 hours, 48 minutes, and 18 seconds. The blonde man noted they must finish before this terrifying sky clock hit zero. At that moment, the final number on the clock ticked down. Darkness covered Taiga's gloomy face as he stood in the entryway of Subaru's makeshift home. He found it odd that Subaru hadn't returned yet, even though it was already morning. Taking out his mobile phone, he glanced at the screen and noticed that Subaru hadn't read his online messages either. Taiga's eyes widened in surprise when he saw a recent news headline posted a few hours ago. Bronze-ranked player killed by another player. Staring at the glowing screen, he wondered which player had been killed. He froze eyes wide open as he recognized Kunisaki's picture in the news, a person who had mocked Subaru. Tigaiza frowned, recalling the past when the Golden Gate appeared beside his brother and thought it unlikely that Subaru was involved. Taiga's eyes gleamed with a bright golden light. His clenched fist began to glow intensely. 
With just one punch, the entire locker where Subaru lived shattered into pieces. Gritting his teeth, he stood there with his raised fist, his eyes blazing with furious golden flames. He couldn't believe Subaru had become a player. At the Sagawa City Player Association headquarters, the official organization managing awakened players and gates in Japan, Subaru marveled at the brightly lit fountains surrounded by people. He thought the place was incredible. As he continued to walk, he realized that everyone there was a player. Approaching the new member registration desk, he saw a girl with bright pink hair in an emerald uniform smiling brightly at him. She congratulated him on awakening and invited him to register. Subaru looked down clutching his elbow and agreed. In Japan, non-member players were not allowed near the gates. Leveling up could only occur within the gates, so to become stronger you needed to be a member of the organization. Subaru also noticed an advertisement featuring Kunisaki about the bronze-ranked player's murder. He thought about how yesterday's events were indeed a murder. He realized investigating the case would likely involve higher-ranked players, possibly even gold-ranked ones. Subaru's face scrunched up as he imagined his brother's maniacal laughter. If it was Taiga, he was sure Tage would kill him. Subaru thought he needed to conquer as many gates as possible to be as prepared as he could. He absent-mindedly watched the girl energetically explaining with her white-gloved hands. She said she would explain everything to him, in order. She mentioned three key points he needed to remember. First, capturing gates would increase his level. Second, the more stars outside, the higher the difficulty level. Third, after capturing, the remaining stars could be converted into money. Subaru listened carefully, thinking it now understood how this worked. He placed a star on the counter and asked if he could convert it into money right away. He recalled the star falling out of the attacker's pocket yesterday. Subaru's lips tightened into a thin line as he looked away, thinking he was out of money and needed to convert the star immediately. The girl leaned close to the star, her eyes wide with curiosity. She apologized in a low voice and asked where he got it. Subaru stepped back in fear, looking down at the floor but still fidgeting with his fingers. He said he had just become a player yesterday and then immediately saw a gate and decided to fight. The girl replied that an unregistered player entering a gate would be punished with five years of forced labor or a fine of one million yen. He exclaimed, asking if it was really five years of labor. Moving away from the counter, he began to tremble and looked down with a terrified expression. He thought it was a careless mistake on his part, but didn't know the crime was so severe. Overwhelming fear was evident in his eyes as he pondered what he should do next. At a police station in a tall building, one of the officers looked up in surprise. In front of him stood Arctigia, wearing round sunglasses and a black fur coat. Looking at him, the man smiled, thinking that only three people in Japan had gold-ranked player status. The man asked how he could help him. He tensed up when Taiga said he was here about the murder yesterday. Taiga asked whom he should contact for information on evidence and witnesses. Removing his sunglasses, he smirked and said he needed to confirm something. Bright sunlight shone on the headquarters of the player association. Subaru received one million yen, Staring at his phone screen, he was amazed by the huge sum. Finally, he could transfer the money. Looking at Subaru with fear, the pink-haired girl clutched the counter. She reiterated that capturing a gate by an unregistered player was a crime. Smiling widely, she made an OK sign with her fingers. She cheerfully said she could make an exception this time. Clasping his hands together, Subaru looked at her with expressionless eyes but a smile on his lips. He loudly thanked the office worker, thinking that this was very dangerous. Looking at his phone, Subaru thought he needed to know the exchange rates. One star, one million yen. Two stars, three million yen. Three stars, 10 million yen. Four stars, 30 million yen. Five stars, 100 million yen. Subaru wondered if players could really earn that much money there. Holding his phone, he closed his eyes, thinking he could only dream of this now. He thought he would have to risk his life. Raising his head, he said that if he immediately went to find a gate, then, Suddenly, he thought he saw a barber shop and a clothing store in front of him. Subaru looked at the clothing store first, then turned his head toward the barber shop. Raising his hand, he looked at his tattered tracksuit. Gritting his teeth, he confidently stepped inside. There, he was greeted by a smiling barber and a friendly consultant. The millions in Subaru's account quickly decreased to 875,000 yen. The sweet consultant and barber waved goodbye to him, thanking him for his purchase. Looking at his phone, Subaru was delighted with his new haircut, wearing blue pants and a shirt. Strolling around the building, he passed many shops and clothing stores. A paper cup of coffee was placed on the table in front of him, and the server apologized for the delay. Leaning back, Subaru closed his eyes and smiled contentedly. He thought he really liked today. He thought today he'd been able to buy clothes and get a haircut at a salon for the first time in his life. Holding the cup of coffee, he leaned back in his chair and stretched his legs. 
The boy thought this was also the first time he had been to a coffee shop. Smiling, he raised the cup and took a sip of caramel macchiato. He thought it was delicious, and that he hadn't had anything sweet like that in a long time. Rubbing his eyes, Subaru wiped away the tears that were welling up. He thought it was so good it made him cry. Frowning, he looked down. He looked up and saw what was happening in front of him. He was sitting in a bright high ceilinged room behind a large glass window where shops and other establishments. To get all the bullying he had endured in his life came to mind. From his parents, from his brother, from the school bullies. Smiling slightly, he looked at his cup of coffee and thought that for the first time in his life, he felt free. Bowing his head, Subaru clutched the cup with both hands. He thought that as soon as he finished drinking, he would immediately go find a gate. And after capturing it, he would come back for another drink. The boy frowned, and confidence shone in his eyes. He thought that now he had also become a player. Subaru froze, and his face quickly turned to fear as Daiyi appeared beside him through the glass, with a fiery golden aura surrounding him. Seeing his brother, Taige smiled maniacally and greeted him. A bead of sweat rolled down Subaru's face, and his eyes were filled with horror as he looked at his brother after he called him a bug. Looking through the glass at Taiyi with a fearful face, he thought that he had found him. He tried to understand why he was there. Subaru thought the best thing he could do now was run away. Suddenly, Taiga thrust his hand forward, and under his pressure, the glass began to crack. He reached for Subaru, who stepped back and screamed. Taiga rushed forward, breaking more glass, gritting his teeth with eyes full of hatred and fear. Subaru turned and looked at his brother as he grabbed his collar. The big guy pulled him close with a maniacal smile on his face. He dragged Subaru through the debris with his brother in hand. Tagaiga ran toward the mall exit. He swung his arm, throwing Subaru, and the boy stumbled forward at great speed, colliding with passing cars. Flying through the parking lot, the boy coughed up blood loudly. Behind him, a woman with a child in a stroller was passing by. When she turned around and saw him, her face contorted in fear. The woman saw a man flying toward her and screamed. The child in the stroller also started crying loudly. Looking ahead, Subaru gritted his teeth. Raising both hands forward, he used his skill. Seeing this, Taiga was confused. Thanks to the blood manipulation skill, long blood threads shot out from his hands. First, Subaru grabbed onto one of the parked car in the lot. Then, he tried to grab another one. By doing so, he managed to wrap several cars with his blood threads. Thanks to his manipulation, his speed decreased as he neared the woman and the child. He thought that by turning his blood into threads, he could slow himself down. Wrapped in blood threads, Subaru stood beside the woman holding her child, and tears began to well up. The woman closed her eyes in fear and started to sob softly. She clutched her child tightly and, tossing the stroller aside, ran away. Turning back, Subaru loudly urged her to leave as soon as possible. Gritting his teeth, he stood up, and the threads dissolved into liquid. Realizing the situation he was in, Subaru cursed himself. He looked at Taige who was slowly advancing. Engulfed in large golden flames, the blonde man called out his brother's name in a deep voice. Frowning, he smiled and said he couldn't believe Subaru had actually become a player. Subaru's face was smeared with blood, and he gritted his teeth tightly, looking at his brother with a mixture of displeasure and slight fear. He thought that at just the first level, he already had to fight a gold-ranked player. It seemed unbelievable that Taiga had found him. With a furious expression, the blonde man gritted his teeth, once again enveloped in a golden aura. In a coarse voice, he told Subaru he was going to kill him. In response, Subaru also gritted his teeth, and his eyes began to glow with a rainbow light. He thought that now, with his lips pressed into a thin line and his brow furrowed, a multicolored aura shimmered around him. He resolutely thought that there was only one thing left to do. The woman behind the wheel frowned, oblivious to the people running past her car. She wondered why there was such a ridiculous traffic jam, noticing that the cars weren't moving at all. When she finally noticed people outside, she looked out the window and turned to the man beside her, asking what was happening ahead. The man replied loudly that Arga had gone rogue. Fear etched across her face, she asked if he meant the famous gold-ranked player. The man advised her to leave the car and run. Subaru and Taigie stood facing each other, surrounded by their respective energies. At that moment, the man yelled that soon everything here would be turned upside down. The blonde man glared at his brother with a contemptuous smile, while Subaru gritted his teeth, bearing them in defiance. Taige looked at Subaru with surprise as he spoke. Gazing at his brother from beneath furrowed brows, Subaru asked how he had found his location. Taige sneered, revealing his white teeth. He lunged forward, aiming a punch at Subaru, but Subaru dodged in time. Taige said that Subaru would have to figure it out himself. Subaru jumped back, creating distance between them, frowning and baring his teeth. Subaru thought that maybe Taiyi had used the GPs on his phone, and it was a big mistake to turn on his phone to transfer money. 
Tiger questioned the significance of this. He activated his golden glove skill, and the right side of his face and hand were covered in golden armor. The blonde man smirked maliciously, saying that Subaru would die regardless. Subaru's eyes widened in shock and fear. He thought this was unexpected. His eyes glowed with a rainbow light as he frowned. Closing his eyes, he prayed to Vanquish, who was always by his side, asking if he had a chance to succeed. Vanquish, standing behind him, grinned, revealing sharp teeth. He explained that the blood manipulation skill allowed Subaru to convert MP into his blood and control it at will. He added that if Subaru focused too much on using his power, he would deplete his stats in an instant. Subaru's HP was at 100, 3273, and MP at 1931. Standing with closed eyes, enveloped in a rainbow aura, he said that no matter what, he needed to survive. He opened his eyes, radiating rainbow light, and declared that survival was the only thing worth thinking about right now. And a status display appeared beside him. RXUZRX Subaru, Vampire Elf 1 HP, 132. Her 73 MP1, 1931 physical strength, 36 health, 29 speed, 36 sensitivity, 31 luck, 35. Opposite him, Taiga, covered in golden flames, displayed a status. Eric Tijigo and Might LV 23 HP 500 SC Seth. 562. M Free Sensei. 220 physical strength, 153 health, 122. Speed 102,002 sensitivity, 101. The blonde man took a step back, raised his armored hand, and yelled that Subaru would be sent flying. With a maniacal grin, he slashed forward with his golden punch skill. The blonde man's attack hurtled towards Subaru, who frowned and faced it with confidence. In an instant, Tagaya observed a massive explosion. He smirked as small fragments of asphalt flew past him. Suddenly, he froze, eyes wide with surprise. He glanced at his brother, who was airborne above him on blood threads. Turning around, he tried to understand the situation behind those threads. As Subaru flew by, he thought about the gray-haired guy in the web threads. He felt fortunate to have seen that skill and decided it was time to use something similar with his blood manipulation. Taijia appeared behind the airborne Subaru. Turning around, Subaru saw his brother raising his fist with a scowl saying it was too late. Gritting his teeth, Subaru swung his left hand to the side, releasing a blood thread from it. Pulling himself up, he narrowly avoided his brother's powerful attack. Subaru landed on the ground, and at that moment, Tiaja punched the asphalt, causing it to crack and fly into large pieces. The young man marveled at his brother's strength, thinking that just one punch could have killed him. Rising from the ground, Taiga glanced at his brother, pondering if his skill was merely drawing blood from his own hand. He wondered if Subaru could move freely and grab objects, and if that was all. Opening his mouth, he shouted that it was all nonsense. Leaping from his spot, he charged at his brother. He thought that he should shoot him down quickly and end this. Subaru stood with a scowl as a blood mist began to form around him. He looked at his brother with fury, and the mist started to obscure his face. Taiga abruptly halted, seeing the blood mist in front of him. Standing in the mist, he began to look around in astonishment. He wondered if this was another skill of his brother. Suddenly, Subaru, enveloped in a rainbow flame, appeared behind him. Swinging a punch, his eyes glowed with different colors. He remembered Vanquish's words, lifting his fist and gritting his teeth, thinking he needed to use all his hatred. As Taiga turned, Subaru punched him in the chest. At that moment, the blonde man's eyes widened in surprise, and Subaru looked at him confidently. Then, the young man frowned, feeling a sharp pain in his hand as all his fingers broke. Grabbing his injured arm, he screamed in pain. He recalled the fight with the bullies yesterday, and thought he could kill Sawatari with one punch. But this didn't work with Taiye. His HP dropped to 129 Hei, 173. The blonde man swung his armored hand, running his fingers across his brother's stomach. He said that Subaru had hit rock bottom, Subaru was thrown back, and with a fearful expression, he looked at the open wound from which blood started to pour. His HP dropped another 20 points. Standing opposite Taiga, he clutched his stomach as blood gushed out in front of a large fountain. His HP plummeted to 1273. His eyes were filled with shock and horror. The blonde man laughed loudly, his white teeth gleaming. Smiling, he approached his brother's head, saying Subaru wouldn't run anymore. The young man froze, eyes wide with surprise. Sharp blood blades emerged beneath his feet, gritting his teeth. Taige pulled his hand back, angry that his brother had done something again. At that moment, Subaru, gritting his teeth, stood up from the ground. He swung his hand forcefully, whispering to the blood. The blonde man was astonished as red spots began to appear before his eyes. Subaru transformed his blood into mist, obscuring Taiga's vision. He extended his bloody hand forward, using his blood manipulation skill, directing the blood blades toward his brother. 
Taige froze, surprise in his eyes. With a hateful look, Subaru stood with his hand extended. He thought that although not much, these were the sharpest blades he could create at the moment. Taiga laughed loudly, saying that was why the blonde man stood there with a gloomy face, and all the blades flew off him. Sure, in a low voice, he added that it was all nonsense. Subaru stood with his hand extended, a fearful smile on his face. He wondered why there wasn't a single scratch on his brother. He thought about the blonde man twice, noting his speed, then how he destroyed the asphalt with just one punch, marking his strength, and the current situation with the blades showing Taiga's defense. Subaru realized it was on a completely different level. The blonde man stepped forward, crushing the blood fragments under his feet, causing them to shatter into pieces. Subaru's thoughts flashed to the rainbow door that appeared yesterday. He thought it didn't matter what it took to become a player and how skilled he was. A dark shadow appeared on his fearful face. With a maniacal grin, Tigay raised his hand above him, realizing he couldn't defeat him. The blonde man stared at his brother, thinking everything would only get harder as the level of skill application to transform blood into different shapes would increase similarly. He reached toward his brother's head, grabbing Subaru's hair, who had no expression on his face, on the top of his head. He thought he should lift his brother's head up. The blonde man swung his hand and aimed a golden fist at him, thinking he should kill Subaru now. A brilliant golden light reflected in the young man's terrified eyes. With a loud roar, Taige aimed a punch at Subaru. A shockwave resounded as the punch landed. Subaru froze in place, and the asphalt behind him started to break off the ground into large pieces. Covered in rising dust, Taigi looked at his brother. Subaru coughed loudly, looking back at him. He thought that speed and strength were useless. However, the blonde man's eyes widened in surprise. Subaru's HP had dropped to 5 out of 173, and MP was at 77 out of 131. Gritting his lips into a thin line, Subaru looked at his brother who had his fist on a blood orb on his chest. He thought if all this wasn't enough. What about softness and viscosity? Taiga looked at the blood orb with fear in his eyes, trying to understand what this sensation was. He compared the feeling of the orb to a boxing glove or a tight band. Staring at his brother, the blonde man pulled his hand back. He realized that Subaru had dissipated the force like an airbag. Raising his hand, he was surprised that the blood orb was still on his hand, tightly clinging to his palm. Taiga stared at the blood orb with fascination, his excitement evident. He began to shake his hand, but the blood remained firmly attached. Puzzled, he tried to figure out what it was and why he couldn't remove it. At that moment, Subaru watched him intently. Subaru thought of the image of sticky chewing gum. His performance hadn't changed. Looking around, Taigayu yelled in frustration, asking if Subaru was joking now. Subaru's MP dropped drastically to 45 out of 131. The blonde man looked at the numerous similar blood orbs appearing around him with surprise. Subaru realized that now was the most decisive moment. He covered himself in rainbow flames and extended his hand forward. He thought about how blood manipulation only lasted 10 seconds. Sweat dripped down his face as his eyes shone with vibrant colors. Despite using all his MP, with a smile on his face and a look of surprise, the blonde man tried to shield his hand from the blood spraying onto him. At this moment, Subaru thought that he would immobilize Taiga as the sticky substance began to spread across his body. The blonde man cursed loudly, thinking about how this thing clung to him and couldn't be removed. He thought that Subaru's skill was far more serious than he had imagined. The blonde man lifted his leg and kicked a stone on his path, with a loud tearing sound. He slowly tried to walk towards Subaru, calling his brother's name. Gritting his teeth, he glared at Subaru with hatred. After some time, Tagaiga stood facing Subaru. He looked down at him, angrily asking if Subaru truly thought he had won. Sweat dripped down Subaru's face. He told the blonde man that he had no intention of winning, and his sole goal was to survive. Taiga stepped back looking at his brother with surprise. Gazing into Taigai's eyes, Subaru covered in rainbow energy, said he thought he had resolved it. More blood orbs began to emerge from the blood spreading on the asphalt. His MP dropped to 9 out of 131. Gritting his teeth, Taigai frowned as the sticky substance began to cover his head. Within seconds, blood completely covered Taiga's body, and he realized that his breathing and vision were gone. He repeated his brother's name in his mind, who had released a blood thread from his palm and started counting. As Subaru soared into the air, he counted to seven. Pulling his second hand forward, the young man moved farther from the battlefield. When he reached the tenth second, he raised his hand and activated his skill again. At that moment, the sticky substance disappeared from Taigai's body, and he opened his eyes in shock. He began examining his palm, realizing it was still blood, meaning Subaru had maintained the skill continuously, thinking he would immediately catch up to him. Taigai was surprised when he looked up and saw a dense red mist ahead. Gritting his teeth in anger, 
he thought he knew it was a smokescreen. With precise timing, Subaru's words echoed in his mind. His goal was to survive, and he had succeeded. Burning with rage, Tagiga clenched his fists, and his entire body ignited with brilliant golden flames. He roared in fury that Subaru had deceived him. His face contorted with anger, and with his mouth wide open, he shouted that Subaru had thought too highly of himself for daring to run away from him, and wherever he was hiding. Suddenly, the blonde man froze, sensing someone's presence. A deep male voice called his name. The blonde man straightened up, fear clearly etched on his face. He glanced at the newcomers, ignoring the sweat running down his face. Amid the rubble, three men appeared before him, one of them calmly asking why there was such chaos. Dressed in white and blue suits with a gentle smile on his face, Haka Renji looked at him. He was accompanied by a bearded man with a smiley face headband and a young man with many piercings and round sunglasses. Taiga thought that if Shikishima and Yudu were also here, he must have gone too far. Turning to the younger men, Taigai opened his mouth wide and yelled that he had no time to explain. At that moment, his body was bound by a golden chain, and its creator began pulling him aside. He looked in the opposite direction and saw three silhouettes in the mist. One of them remarked with a mocking laugh that it seemed someone had gone too far with the chaos. Taiga stared through the mist with fearful eyes, thinking this couldn't be real. The three shadows moved closer to him. Taige looked around and realized that now all seven gold-ranked players had gathered here. Renji called the blonde man's full name, pointing his glowing golden sword at him, saying he was chained. He looked at the blonde man with an emotionless expression, his golden eyes shining brightly, and said they all wanted to hear his story now. Browning, the blonde man gritted his teeth. The sun set behind the tall buildings, and Subaru knelt on the roof of one of them. His HP was 5, and his MP was 2. With his hand on the ground, he looked down. He thought that his brother hadn't chased him and that he had escaped. Sweat dripped down his face, and Subaru gritted his teeth in anger. He thought that his brother was indeed too strong, and if he found him again, he wouldn't be as lucky. Subaru looked down. He glanced at his shirt with a large hole in the chest, thinking that what he had just bought was torn to shreds. The young man laughed nervously, remembering the abandoned shopping bags. He thought that everything else was left behind at the cafe. With his head down, Subaru thought that he was happy to have bought those things back then, hitting on the floor. He folded his elbows over his knees and thought he was genuinely happy. He clenched his fist and pressed it against his bloodied chest. He thought that to develop freely, he had to fight. A lot of Macchiato appeared in his mind. He thought he should become stronger. He recalled his small cupboard. He called home and thought he would never return there. Clenching his fists, Subaru looked up with determination, promising himself he would become stronger.